Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for July 18th through the 24th, 2022. So before I begin, i just like to welcome everyone back to this uh, weekly series and to also welcome anyone who might be new to the Angelic Wisdom community. Um, just a few things before we begin. Um, first of all, I'd just like to invite you um, at some point um, during this video to subscribe and to um, like or dislike and also to leave comments and to um, and share your feedback in terms of your experience um, with the angels um, as you connect in with this reading. And if you're looking for an angel reading, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services. There's a link below this uh, video in the description area. And also, um, you can select the first time promotional offer reading, um, and which I've been giving um, for this entire year, unlimited, since it's my 10th anniversary on YouTube. So, um, and there are also other options there. So if you feel called to have a reading with me um, in, your, in your heart, then, you know, please feel free to um, connect with me. And um, I think, you know, I think that's about it. Um, I was going to say, if you haven't seen, because the month is kind of halfway through the month now, but if you haven't seen the monthly angel reading, general reading, um, you can check that out on my channel or there's my Twitter um, account or Facebook page that you might easily find it. So there's links uh, to those um, social media uh, pages below. And uh, um, also um, the monthly angel scopes, which are the videos for the 12 zodiac signs. All right, so let's take a deep breath. Just, just breathe into your heart chakra. As you place your attention there, feel your own wings, the, the light of your heart chakra just open up and expand all around you. And you might even sense golden light around you. And at the core of your heart chakra is a beautiful glowing white and pink light. And around you, your angels are now drawing near and folding you in a circle of wings of unconditional love. And they are, for some reason, writing the word letters. Um, so there's some type of communication and messages that the angels are have been sharing with you and you may be receiving them um, in your imagination in your daydreams in your thoughts you can also receive them um, as other people might be communicating with you and you feel like they're speaking right to your soul or to your heart. So be aware of 
the messages that are coming to you. And they ask you this week to open your arms and receive. They want you to trust your intuition and that you are being a channel this upcoming week, that you're accessing and that you're channeling um, and they're writing for some reason explanations. So you might, um, as you're talking, as you're being open, as you're interacting, um, explanations for things might occur to you that you've um, never thought of or have received before. So be aware that those explanations that you're receiving are clear guidance. And they're writing that they want you to focus your attention this week. They're saying that it's going to be hard because there's a lot of things that are coming up in your life. Um, it might even be things coming up that are emotional, things um, you know, things that, be, that might trigger you, um, things from your past. But they want you to know that it's very important to have a focus and to focus your attention on all the beautiful things that you have in, going on in your life right now. Anything that's that you may not even be expecting, but that there are beautiful things coming up in your life right now. And they want you to really focus on those. And there's a sense that um, your life is shifting, but you gotta remember that you're in a transition period. So what this means is, is that it's very easy for us to wanna, to be afraid of moving out of that zone of comfort that we've been in, even if it hasn't been the best for us, but we know it, and so it's hard to adjust and to adapt. It's the transition period, what I think is really important about it, is being aware of habits. And so habits are changing, transforming, and it's hard to be able to rely on something that's completely new, right? So you, you're gonna have doubts. You're going to um, perhaps feel that you put yourself out there and maybe this wasn't the brightest idea, you know? So be aware of a transition period. You know, we often overlook that there are challenges in transitioning the, the challenges that come with change because everything that's coming, the change that's coming and the change that's being laid out in front of you, that path is intimidating because it means that for a while you have to take great responsibility to, you know, keep rolling with it. You know what I mean? It's almost like it's like a, I don't know why this imagery comes to my mind, but it's like a stone um, that you're trying to push along. And you have to, it feels like the responsibility is that stone. And until you get used to it, it no longer um, feels like a responsibility, but it feels like it's a part of your reality. It's something that you accept. But trying to change, it feels like a stone, like you're pushing it up. You know, and so when you're in the transition period, until those, until you've assimilated the the new behaviors and patterns, um, the new habits, until you've assimilated that and become familiar with it, um, and that you trust yourself, there's a lot of vulnerability um, for doubt, for all kinds of, um, you know, just. Under, undermining the self and self-sabotage. So this is a time to really um, call out and ask for support. They're writing the word support in front of me. 
to ask your angels for support, to um, really be discerning about the supporters, the, the supportive people in your life. Don't reach out to people that you know um, for some reason. You know, we like to blame people for not showing up the way that we want them to. But they're just being who they are. They're showing you who they are. And you're trying to make them into something that you need in that moment. And we get mad with, with people when they don't. And what instead of going to those and trusting those people who are always showing up for us in the ways that we need them at specific times, no one is going to show up for you the way you want them to all the time. Or, you know, certain people have gifts, right? And they are able to be supportive in those ways. So you have to, again, accept people for the way they show up. And so you know this person, um, you know, will always show up for you when you're in a transition period, in a breakup of a relationship, for example. And they are always the greatest person to help you to sort of um, reconnect and, and realign. Then don't look for that person to be the person who might... Um, be supportive when you have this really, you know, risky, crazy idea, you know, career choice or something like this because they've never shown up to you. They, they usually don't show up for you in that way. They they may be a little critical or... And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them, right? How they feel about, you know leaving abruptly a job. So be aware of your support, okay, um, team. And the angel number I was seeing when I was talking is 81. And it says, the more you stay positive about money, the greater your financial flow will be. And this is a challenge. <laughs> This is a challenge um, because we first have to understand the fear that is underlying um, our concerns about money. One of the things is habits. So the first thing that fear will do is it will um, sort of infiltrate your habits and you'll start to align with habits that create your fear. So you gotta remember you're always creating your reality. So you gotta look at how are you creating fear. And it may be things that are hidden from you, um, like compulsive spending, or not having a focus for your attention, um, a focus for the way that you invest the energy of your resources and your time. So you may have to go back and look at how are you investing your energy and your resources and your time? Are you watching things that trigger a sense of insecurity and instability? There's a lot in the news today and in the media to really trigger those things. And it's a bit excessive. The coverage of any particular topic, especially the ones that are the most triggering, the ones that, are, that make you feel like, you know, the world is coming to an end or you can't trust anyone. Everybody's, you know, to watch it, to be aware, but to, con but if you spend a lot of time just watching every little bit tidbit that comes out, why are you doing that? What is What are you going to get from that? Because just being informed is one thing, but becoming obs obsessive about something is a whole nother thing. And especially if it's not making you feel good and it's affecting your mood and affecting the way that you feel about life and your your reality. Remember, you are the creator of your reality. And no matter what's going on in the world, you are still the creator of your reality. Your vibration is, <clears throat> is, a, is a response 
to the way that you choose to focus your time, energy, and resources. And if you detach yourself from some of these things, you will be able to focus your attention and intention in a way that attracts beauty to yourself in your life experience. So if something like this triggers compulsion, so then what that might lead to, and this is just one scenario, right? Is that you start to spend and, and, you, and you start to think things will replace it. I need physical things because I'm watching all these things going on in my physical reality. So you might be eating, it might be substance abuse, it might be spending. But all of these things cause you to expend energy, to expend your resource, you know, to lose, to spend your um, resources unwisely because you're being triggered, right? Signals that you're getting is that you, you what you're doing literally is looking for love in all the wrong places. That's what compulsions are about. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Meaning anything, when you're looking for love outside of yourself, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. When you're looking for someone to be, to show up in a way that you need them to, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. When you're looking at somebody and you see that they have... Um, uh, attributes and habits that um, annoy you and you need them to be different in your environment. You need them to be different. You're looking for love in all the wrong places and you're looking at them in a way and only seeing that part of them that you cannot love which focuses your attention on looking for love in the wrong way. So it's all looking for love in the wrong places because if you're looking for some, at someone in a certain way that you do not like, that you cannot love, you tell yourself, then you're going to attract that unloving quality in your experience, meaning... Every time you see in that moment, that person irritates you. Everywhere else, everything else you look at, your that that if you allow that thing to dominate your energy, then everywhere you look, you're going to see things that you do not like about people, except the ones who are most agreeable to you on the surface. And then again, it's still looking for love in all the wrong places because you're not being responsible and you're not being fair to them because no one is here to please you. You please yourself by the way that you choose to focus your attention. And this can be a huge responsibility if it feels like it's a challenge to you. So, you know, they write the word resignation. You have to resign yourself that you are the creator of your own reality. And you have to accept people the way they are. And once you can accept people for the way they are, you know, an unbiased um in an unbiased way, then that means that you can love them no matter what. Once you can love people no matter what, then you can focus in on their qualities. And you focus in on their qualities by focusing on those qualities within yourself. And you might highlight something for them, a shift in their attitude because they see you in standing in all your power and all your beauty, honoring who you are, 
and not choosing to be a certain way because of someone else because or because you're trying to make them be something better but you're doing it because this is who you are this is what makes you feel good this is what it feels like to honor your truth to follow your bliss and then you become a muse an inspiration to others where you highlight these the quality not the specific qualities but you're highlighting the you're highlighting one your divinity the act of being true to yourself and that is what creates change when someone sees that if they can be true to themselves but not try to emulate parts of you that may not be true for them or that they might not really resonate with, but that everybody can identify and resonate with authenticity and being true to oneself. And if you can inspire that, you are bringing others to their truth because this is who we all truly are. Okay. Hmm. So this whole idea of spending, now when you found that place where you're being true to yourself and you listen and you pay attention to when something doesn't, something feels off, or something feels off because it's excessive and that you need to realign, redirect your attention. And this way you might be able to redirect the way you use your resources. So I was gonna say earlier about this focusing of attention. A lot of times we have our money going in different places and then we feel negatively about it because the money is not doing anything for us. It's not really there for us when we need it for the things that all of a sudden we are enthusiastic or passionate about. And you have these coping, your money's coping. It's being used to cope. And so there's a lot of things that you don't need those coping mechanisms anymore. And you can withdraw your resources from those things and redirect it toward the focus of your attention that is positive, that are that is um, fulfilling for you, that is helping to um, align you with um, what makes you happy. Happy, right? And they're talking about a process, and you know they're saying that this take this is a process to look at how where is your energy, where is your attention going first, and the reason behind it is it because you're looking for love in all the wrong places? Are you trying to use your resources, your time and your energy to make the world seem happy? And if that is the case, then those, those are resources, time and energy, you can reclaim. And then redirect and refocus your attention to something that you invest because that it is aligned within your spirit, this action, this act will align you with the joy within. Some things we hope, we think it's gonna give us that joy, but you know, compulsions and you know, uh, obsessions don't, they're not after that. They want instant gratification and they, they're not, you know, they're not after it because you got to keep doing it. 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 And that's a waste of energy and the resources drain. So that's one aspect of the more you stay positive about money. You can't do that until you are aware of where your attention is flowing and why. And it says the more you stay positive about money, the greater your financial flow will be. All right, let's take a look 
at the Archangel we're working with this week. So this is Archangel Hope, and this is a very positive sign because as you can see, she has rainbow energy. And whenever you see a rainbow, you can be rest assured that Archangel Hope is present and that she's giving you a sign. When the rainbow, when you see a rainbow, your heart leaps, right? We're like all like, oh, and it seems mystical. And that is happening during the daylight at that, right? Um, where you can see everything. Like, you know, it's like, there's, it, 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 you just have to accept this graciously. When things happen, when opportunities happen to us in the light of day, there are no tricks. We don't often accept them because we might believe that we're not deserving of them because we've held a belief because of the way that we invest our time and our energy that things don't work out for us. Think great things like that don't happen. So we doubt them. And sometimes there are other really um, very sad reasons, you know, that you might hear people give explanations and you say, oh my God, that's really sad that you believe that. But we all do at some point, right? So it's really important for you to, when that door, when the rain, when you see a rainbow, it opens a door, a golden door of opportunity. And Archangel Hope is standing at that door and her heart is so fully open fully open and she's helping you to be open but she's also being aware of just how much you're open and that when you at that moment that will determine how much hope you're willing to allow in and i don't mean to make this sound you know again oppressive because it's putting that weight on you of responsibility on your shoulders but we do have to be aware that life is good or life is really awful because of our openness or our um, inability to be open to goodness. We rely too much on everything around us to make us happy when it's just right, it's all with the acceptance of an idea that that's the only thing that you have to do is be open and accept and receive and appreciate and be gracious and, and, and grateful, right? Be generous, receive generously, love generously, be loved generously, allow, allow, and know that you deserve it. She says, remember you deserve it. So this week, a, a cosmic gift is going to come to you. It can be on any level that you could experience inner joy or happiness or gratitude. And whatever it is in that moment, when it hits you, let it rip. Don't hold back. Don't try to restrain it. Don't try to put you know, controls over it. Don't try to, you know, it's almost like don't put restraints because you don't want to like let yourself, you know, I don't want to let myself get too, too, um, I know the words I'm thinking of, but you know, you don't want to let yourself get too excited. Do that inside of yourself. Be excited. And start being aware of every little moment of gratitude or it's a gift that life shows you and be open. Let yourself be tickled pink about it. Let yourself be excited. Let yourself feel such elation or awe. Maybe you might see this beautiful scene in nature and it just opens up your heart with so, and you're just in awe. Let all of these things, because every one of these interactions is this doorway. It's a cosmic gift because it 
inspires the opening of your heart, which means it expands the door for what you are able to receive in your life. And so be open to those very beautiful moments. Okay, so the first card that we have is the Page of Cups. And this sort of indicate, oh, sorry, the Page of Coins. All right, and so, sorry about that. Yeah, it's the page, the glasses. I'm wearing glasses, and then can't see far away the words. <laughs> the, the, the Page of Coins is like a, a, a messenger. It's about new opportunities um, coming into your 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 life at this time. It might be um, that this is a, a good time to, you know, if you've been inspired about something recently, like an idea and they're writing yes, um, especially a financial investment or um, a new um, opportunity, like going to school and, and, and learning, um, you know, in terms of training um, for a job, then this is indicating that this is the right time now to plant that seed. I mean, it's literally like what the page is doing. He's holding that seed ready to plant it, that coin. And he's saying it's the right time. And you can see that there, you know, things start to pop up in the fields here. <laughs> and, um, and you see the apple tree, you know, and this idea, this one here looks like it's being pulled by gravity, right? So, you know, there's a sense of paying attention to that right moment, right? When when something is ripe and is ready to fall and knowing that and feeling that within your gut. So pay really um, close attention to your gut and how you feel. When I saw this card, when I was pulling, I saw a vision for each one of these, and I'm not quite sure what this one means, but I'll, when I get there, I'll tell you about it. But it's just one simple vision. Like, this was just sort of someone wearing a shirt, but the behind is naked. So, you know, that's my symbol for vulnerability. Yes, of course, that you're an idea. You're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to feel like you, you know, you got caught with, with your pants off, you know. Of course. But... You know, that's the that's the, the thing about risks is what are you really risking? You're risking change. You're risking that, you know, what you have believed for so long, maybe the reason why you didn't go back to school, the reason why you have never um, taken an opportunity to invest or to um, start your own um business or, or another idea to generate some income is because maybe you didn't believe you could or you didn't believe that um it was that you maybe you thought you were being selfish and all kinds of reasons but the idea here is now that you have the right idea and this is the time for you to to, to do this so whatever messages that you've been listening to or that you've been receiving i've been talking about earlier that people might say to you you know you'd make a great then, and people keep saying it, just trust that your angels have been trying to get that message to you in many different ways. And this card, the page, is representing that message about your finances or about your your um, career in terms of your work or job opportunity, like, or going back to school. Know that that's a confirmation. Oh, the high priestess. Okay. So this was interesting because I saw a cobra snake sort of standing up when I pulled this card. Um, and I know a lot of us, you know, <laughs> we don't, um, we think of the snakes as, um, you know, sort of in a negative connotation. Um, but the high priestess here is, you know, saying, weigh your options. Okay, and also she highlights your intuition. So this this message is coming through your in, in through your intuition. You know, trust the waters 
in your body. Trust those, trust your emotions. Um, and also to really, it, it says that you have some knowledge, um, that your, your, your soul has some knowledge that you have not accessed yet. And perhaps, you know, you might be concerned about, oh, this is such a challenge and I don't know if I can do this. But the thing is, is that this opportunity, this, even though you might not feel prepared or adequately um, prepared for it, that it will, you know, sort of bring out this knowledge. Like maybe you've never thought of yourself as a leader and, and this brings this out, these qualities out of you, these gifts out of you. Um, I mean, the, the, you know, the snake can be seen as transformation, but you know, that he's sitting up there. I mean, he didn't look threatening at all, but he definitely his, you know, his, um, you know, looked like it fans out. So it, it may be that, um, this is a situation where you need to really prepare yourself and maybe really think about um, what it is that you are really trying to do. Um, I see the angel number message I see is 230, is it 238? Or two, yeah, 238. They'll be flashing and they go out. Um, the ascended masters have heard and answered your prayers for increased abundance. They know that we humans have material needs which they are helping you with right now, okay? So, I don't know, it seems like you might see this, um, you might see this thing as a threat, you know, like it might threaten your, your, your comfortability, you know, um, you, you, somehow I get the sense of intimidation. So, don't allow yourself to be intimidated. Take some deep breaths. Really go within and make sure you're not listening to your fear, but that you're listening to your heart. So, I mean, really here, the, the queen, I mean, sorry, the, the high priestess is really saying to listen to your heart. And there's a difference between your fears and your and your, your heart. If you, if your fears are the things that are always talking to you in the back of your head and telling you that you're not capable, that you're not this, or this could go wrong, and this could go wrong, okay? Your, if you feel at all, you know, hope when you think about this opportunity, no matter how small it is, this is a sign that Archangel Hope is with you and that that hope of yours can be expanded. But in order to do that, you've got to listen to your heart. So don't be attacked by your fears. So like that cobra. And maybe what you're doing is that you're attacking yourself or there's the threat of an attack and your ego is giving you all of these um, negative, uh, negative communications about this idea. All right. And I think this is interesting because, you know, here we have the two of swords and I always, well, all the twos are related to the high priestess, but um, she always looks like she's sort of like um, a novice going into the priestess, priest, um, priestesshood. <laughs> and so she doesn't know which way to go, right? Maybe um, she's been given this, you know, huge task, these, these big swords, right? To, to, and each sword is probably something really difficult. Um, a question that is where the, the you know, because they both are equal, where both sides are plausible. Or they represent two opportunities very different, but both um, valid. And you find it hard to choose. And I just keep thinking about something like if, I, if you were studying to be a priestess 
and you know you are learning to use your meditation you're learning meditation you're learning to discernment of your heart when and what's really here maybe the you're weighing the heart you're weighing um things against the heart and the thing is you got to figure out which one is in alignment with your heart like i was talking about earlier i can't remember what it was but i think you can complete you probably do so the whole idea here is to get out of your head and to find your heart because it's not really about the choice between these two things it's really about the heart and what's right for your heart okay so whatever is on your mind that you know like the pros and the cons it's not about the pros and the cons what you might gain and what you might lose things 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 no this is about your heart this is about your heart and what i saw was that whatever the situation is i saw a gateway we're talking about that door opening right similar so this is about you choosing your heart over the things even if one's pro and one's cons right one is um comfortable you know you know the, the risk involved but there is never a risk when you follow your heart not to say that you won't be challenged but remember how you choose to show up in life is what will determine the outcome of your path so you can be on any path you can be on any path doesn't matter really what path you choose because people get stuck about right, with this with purpose it has nothing to do with it it's how you choose to show up on any path being true to yourself being authentic that's what will determine success for you on any path you choose so then it just comes down to it now it doesn't matter like if like if i choose this path then there's some kind of destiny thing at play and i'm and i'm going to just be miserable no matter how happy i could make myself that's not it because that's looking for love in all the wrong places it's about the heart always being true to yourself being authentic following your bliss choosing how to show up when you choose how to show up you focus your attention you create a specific reality and when you back it up with responsibility meaning being consistent as best you can and that only requires intention mustard seed kind of stuff here then that intention of showing up will develop a path of success so all you got to worry about what does my heart want who am i you know how am i being true to myself by how the way I, the way i choose to show up and that will make the difference here okay well that's interesting i didn't i forgot to pull the card from the bottom of the deck I was about to say maybe I don't need to, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's the death card. <laughs> that means huge transformation. This is a time you are going through a trans transitional period. There are things that are inherent in transition. There are endings and there are beginnings. See the the sun we can't tell if it's setting or about to rise but see that's perspective that's all depends on your perspective that's that that you would see that as the setting sun or the rising sun that is determined by how you de uh, decide to show up in the world that's the kind of power and influence that 
deciding how you want to show up in the world can really um, create or cement for yourself. So am I going to be the person who um, is compassionate? Meaning, am I going to show up in the world where I'm always going to be understanding of things? I'm not going to assume that the worst, I'm not going to assume that the world is against me. I'm going to assume that instead, a compassionate view that the world is trying to teach me, that the world is trying to help open me up in some way where I have shut myself down, that the earth classroom that I'm in, that I've chosen, is specifically and always here to help me evolve, to help me find peace and more clarity and fulfillment in my life. That is trying to help me by being true to myself, by being authentic, is helping me to love myself because that's what it is. That is the only way you can prove to or prove love to yourself is by showing up for yourself, by being authentic and honoring your truth. That is loving yourself unconditionally. And so these are the kind of changes that you'll be open yourself up to. So things will be going out of your life and things will be coming in. But the flow of Go things leaving and coming is really life itself. It's an important key process. So do not be afraid to release because you're going to have to get ready to and have your arms be full with new opportunities. So I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful week. God bless you.